You are set to re-encounter the Withdrawn, led by Witch Udmilde. However, her outlandish, her intentions seem one ought to be aware of her. He then reveals what he has learned of her and her designs. Witch Udmilde, one of the bog dwellers and head of the Withdrawn, a charm bred more interested in the legends of Islach the Astralborn than in the rites. Her kind was known to be reclusive in the Commonwealth, yet she was brazen in her disdain for common values. She practiced the unspeakable. Somehow one day her research into flammable regents grew into an obsession with Islach, despite widely held belief that he is dead or never did exist. But Udmilde held that Islach is merely dormant and shall someday be reborn with newfound hunger, which could only be sated by devouring the world. Then at last could Islach return to his glorious home, and Udmilde would go with him. When Commonwealth officials showed up to take Udmilde in for spreading unrest, she was all too eager to comply. After all, a sentence to the downside meant being that much close to Islach's resting place, where she believed she had much work to do, where the withdrawn stood ready to assist. In short, the eight scribes certainly would not approve of what she aims to do, so be careful in her presence, reader. For now, good night. You bid the lone minstrel rest for night and kind. It is too late to take flight, so you expect to press onward from day to day. Page revealed the accusers. Before we forget, let's take a look at the accusers. Is that a new chapter? Maybe. In the words of Howd the Swallow the Accursed, the accusers formed under Golothanian. He is a big man. He values justice, loyalty, steadfastness. Golothanian, he says that the accusers take their name from one of his most accomplished legions from his more former military days. All among them, in fact, served the Master General at one time. They represent the stoutest-hearted people of the Empire who held true to Myr and Golothanian to the end. The golden colors of their raiments are reminiscent of their sh gold shining armor, is his claim. Ever shall they seek out those with the truest spirits and the strongest sense of purpose to replenish their ranks. All right, all right, let's talk to Tizo. Tizo has seemed somewhat less cheerful since his run-in with Lendell and the accusers. He approaches you, wanting for you to hear him out. <laughs> Tizo seems unhappy about something Lendell said to him. <laughs> Tizo understands full well why Lendell is angry with him. Scrahik. <laughs> while Tizo does not like Lendell as a person, he recognizes nonetheless that he denied his freedom. Hurry <laughs> home. It was a liberation rite. He did what he felt necessary. He wanted to help his friend go home. Scrahik! Nonetheless, he feels a certain guilt and regrets that the rites force exiles into such situations. He falls silent for a while. Whether the eight scribes ever intended for imps such as he to participate in the rites firsthand is difficult to know for certain. Well, we made the raiments. Like, that's a pr pretty good sign that you were meant to do this. Then, Scrahik! Tizo is grateful to you for listening. He knows the scribes created the rites with good intentions. Scrahik! He promises to keep doing his best to live up to the legacy of the scribes. He bounds up into the rafters with some of the other drive imps, regardless of whether he truly is a descendant of How the Swallow. Surely the scribes would have been proud of him. Aww. What do we got down here? Oh, that's the planner. Okay. Uh, cool. You called for me, lovely Rita. What's going on with you? Oh, nothing. Take care of yourself, then. Well, with that in mind, I guess we're good to go. That being said, we're going to be doing more exploring than before. Um, can we... I just want to look around, man. Oh no, we can't. We have to go straight to the thing. Oh no! That's sad. I wish I could just explore wherever I wanted. Just so I could collect all the pages. <laughs> Maybe the book is meant to... Okay, I'm not trying to run into them. I just want to talk to them. Oh, what the bloody blazes! Barker notices your wagon at his flank there and begins to laugh. Well, if it isn't the Nightwings flaunting their fancy little flying wagon, eh? You think you're better than us, mates, eh? Pah, you ain't better than the dung I stepped in last night. Now get on out of here, or I have a mind to leap on over there and rip your guzzards out, you hear me? Okay, that's on you. Um, yeah, me, I, I guess this is probably meant for multiple playthroughs, uh, if, if you don't get to every single location, but still, I wanted to, I wanted to see. As you soar about the waters of Worm Gulf, you notice Sir Gilman sidle up to you very slowly. We are very, very, very high above the waters, if this knight is not mistaken. This knight's brethren lurk beneath the surface there, in numbers untold. 
Fortunately, if we were to come crashing to the surface now, then this night, why, he would receive a watery burial in the custom of his kind. Oh, that was, uh, that was it. That's fun. Gotta keep an eye out for those little things. The Hulk of Oris. It has drifted here upon the sea for longer than one might expect. Perhaps you've already read of the doomed ship's demise and the embrace of unfathomed Plurnus. Yeah. Some say it was the sea itself which preserved the ship's remains. Hidden properties within the water, sea creatures binding together ruined planks of wood. Those such as yourselves and the withdrawn know another truth, I gather. The stars would not align over the wreckage if it did not have greater significance than first appears. May you have good fortune there during the coming wreck. Thanks, man. Okay, so we can go to Ragged Rock, Under King Pass, or Fathomless Trench. Let's go to Under King Pass. You touched down at the Sea of Solace where you first encountered Sir Gilman and the Power Hearts. You so soon shall carry on by sea, though for now you have some time to spare. And time to read. The Beyond a Crystal seeks Sir Gilman. Okay, Sea of Souls. Sea of Souls. Okay. Uh, um. Beyond a shallow, sickly gulf, our voyage grew increasingly forbidding and much harder to explain. How could a sea exist here at the bottom of the world? We could not deduce whence sprang the carcasses of ancient sailing ships we found throughout the Sea of Solace, though the warnings that they signified we duly noted. It was here we first met Ores, called the Underking, who brazenly assaulted our small skiff, for we had trespassed in his waters. But then the Underking relented, for he witnessed Solia Mur and all of his doom and glory. Soon he would side with us. Then, with the Underking, we sailed forth into a tempest beyond reasoning or measure. Cool. All right. I can sense you out there somewhere. What is it that you want? You need but choose among those unenlightened fools with whom you travel. Time to summon Sir Gilman. You ask Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Sir Gilman. You think that dimwit of a worm has any chance? Perhaps you are correct, though I put little stock in him myself. Though, let us bring him forth. Soon Sir Gilman appears in heat of the summons. Master Reader, is this knight perchance in trouble for something? I love that they always have to jump in without beginning to explain anything at all. I also love that this arena is on a book. The Apparition Sandra appears and fastens her mask. Listen well, worm, you answer to me here. Um, as you will, your highness. Your highness. I like the sound of that, though flattery will get you nowhere here. Demonstrate your competence to me then, Worm. You shall have it do it most you shall have to do it mostly on your own, though under the guidance of your lovely reader. I trust you are prepared. Are you of course, your highness. This knight accepts this challenge. Oh, some big boys. What is what's on the top there? That's a dinosaur. Dang it. Don't, don't. Be slow. Be slow. That's alright. Get the demon out of the way. It's alright. As long as the ball's far away, it can't get close enough. Oh, that's a tree, man. Hmm. I know. I know what you're going to try. Okay, could you please stop that, though? Bold! Yeah, please be slow. Excuse me? You you can't toss it in the... What is this, like, elementary school basketball strategy of, oh, I didn't uh, double dribble if I toss it in the air and then catch it again. I passed it to myself. 
I know you all have tried that. And it doesn't count. I just want to get close enough, man. Oh wow, you guys are kind of idiots, huh? Have a chance. Oh, I only do 15 damage. I don't have a chance. Could you chill out, please? Definitely didn't mean to do that. Alright, that's my first L. Sandra wins! Kinda proud of her, honestly. Curses! Laughable. The worm lacks any concept of his foolishness. I would tell you not to waste my time, worm, but the truth is that my time is there for you to waste. Do you think you could do better than that? Yes, we can do better. Okay, I can do it as many times as I want, okay. Good for it long to show that one more of his many failings. The tip said he was good in close combat, but not against a demon. Like, the radius is too big unless the demon is actively holding the orb. And even then, Sandra is smart enough to toss the orb away so that she gets her aura back. So, I, I will say this trial is designed to make it tricky for... Sir Gilman. But hey, as long as I keep the ball far away from my goal, it should be alright. Okay, could you, could you, could you guys chill, please? It's a dirty move. I feel like it's a dirty move to toss the orb at me. I don't like that. Stop it! Stop doing that. It's not fair. Oh, come on. Alright, well that's the way to do it. I know I didn't score the goal, but that definitely is the way to do it. Wait, seven seconds? Why? Okay, if I jump as the demon lands, I don't get affected by the knockback. That is good to know. Is that it? 
Yeah, that's it. Oh, man. Sir Gilman does not work well alone. Especially against big boys. I could give him a different talisman, but I feel like it's not going to make that big of a difference. I don't know. If I fail this one, I'll try. Sandra's very patient. Easy mode is now selectable. Thank you. It's also very in character that of all the characters to uh, really not be good at their scribe trial, Sir Gilman feels like the one that would really not be good. I think it's unfair how much this demon is moving around. I'll say it. I don't think Jodariel's that agile. Close. That almost worked. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Alright, taunt mechanic, that's good. I like that. Oh, don't grab onto it. No, use your... Use your boost to get through. I don't like that Gilman appears to not leave behind his little aura juice. Right when he respawns? Okay, well, I just handed that one to them, didn't I? Um, it appears like it takes him a second to actually leave any trail behind, which is really annoying when I'm trying to respawn as quickly as possible and then play defense. Just three more like that. Oh, that's really close. Really close. But you see, like, I can't... It's frustrating. Honestly, that's a very small detail, but it's very frustrating that I can't just do a little small explosion as soon as I respawn. Um, we're going to try and give him a different task. There's no bounty here. Which makes sense, otherwise that would be infinite mining. Your vision returns. You do not prevail on Sir Gilman's scribe trial. You could reattempt it now or after he gains more enlightenment. Uh, we're going to switch talismans and then give him one more chance. Yeah, we're going to have him... That talisman seems useful um, in a, when you're battling on your own. Ask what's on your mind in the meantime. You know, my lovely reader, I must admit that I did not expect your little followers to be quite so receptive to instruction as they, thus they far they have proved. I know not whether they owe it all to you or have somewhat more to them than I was first inclined to think. In any case, however, I am pleased that they are not entirely disgraceful. I like to keep my expectations well in check, seeing as I have been thus expelled until the end of time, so it is pleasant when those expectations are exceeded every now and then, although I cannot quite recall when last that was. But the best part of all of this are these brief times in which you visit me in my domain. I know you cannot for long, this damned crystal in which I am enthralled shall so cede to that. Though, as you have perhaps surmised, whenever it decides that one of your little friends is worthwhile enough, why, I can offer them a trial, and likewise, I can offer you a chat. Sometimes I think as you achieve those trials of mine, perhaps it does, not, it does something to trim the length of my eternal banishment, attorney being what it is, however, perhaps not. Still, if the trophies of those blasted scribes are worth something to you, then all you need is but to brave my trials and they can be yours, and perhaps there's good in it for me too, as well. Then something changes in her and she changes the subject. I've likely said too much. I am not to influence you in your use of the Beyond a Crystal. It is not there to be tampered with by anyone, including me. Forget what I said. Let's try this again. As long as he is ready for more pain, I should be happy to oblige.
Yeah, you keep saying effective in close quarters, but also he's not. Not against a demon, a tree, and a snake. I already forgot what talisman I equipped. Comes back in some, sometimes. Mooncrest! getting used to how to use the character, but um, that's 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 was all right right there. I need to keep in mind that he can teleport using his power as well. That's fair. Okay, guess that wasn't close enough. Oh, I didn't realize if you toss it in, you don't get banished. I just always toss it in because it's max points, but I didn't realize you get to keep all three of your dudes if you just toss it in. Okay. Okay. Okay, I guess that explosion wasn't big enough. Sprint. Okay, guess you can just jump for as far as you want. Okay, that went better than last time, so we're gonna give it one more shot, but after that, I don't know, guys. I, I, maybe I need more experience, but. It also sucks because I don't have any allies, so Gilman's special, when your allies are banished, your faster thing doesn't even apply. Don't even get to use the power-ups that I did give him. Anyways, if you wanted less reading and more sports ball, here's this episode for you. Man, you can't throw it very far, it would seem. good about this one. Oh, they're panicking now. Maybe. Try to jump there. Just get the poor boy. Just get the poor boy from them. No! <laughs> How can you pass? 
pass it that instantly. I feel like there should be time in between the passing. Are you, are you gonna try anything? Okay, I can just chill here. I'm cool with that. Get in there, okay, thank you. All right, one more. This might be the one. Might, might, might be the one. Jump into the... Huzzah! This night prevails! I have no choice but to concur with that assessment, Worm. Your performance was sufficient and you passed my test. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. Master Reader, this knight is humbled after having passed that sorceress test. Wah! By the scales of the Under King Aureus, what is it that you have there? You received Aureus' scale. Sir Gilman jumps farther than usual, 30%. The Under King laughed aside deep wounds and fought and fought and fought. Cool, yeah, I'll go ahead and give that to you. Um, so the big question is... Do I let Pamatha make more money, or do I have... No, actually, it's definitely... Mooncrest is a definitely a handy one. Cool. All right. You and Faye spend much of the day searching through the murky waters of Underking Pass until at last... Oh, have I found something? I found something. You found an unbottled note. It should fetch a decent price. Something retrieved from the waters of the downside. Can I read it? That would be fun if I could read it. I guess there's enough time to, so we can talk to someone else now. Yeah! Uh, don't really have much else, so yeah. You find your Dariel seemingly deep in thought. You consider whether even to bother her. Your presence is not unwelcome, reader. Remain a moment, please. She stares at you for some time. Today marks the beginning of my 16th year in exile. You look back at her and remain silent. You sense that all she wants from you right now is for you to listen. I have kept count. Put notches in this breastplate of mine for each passing day. Notice how much it has frayed. Sixteen years, reader. The orphans whom I fostered would be long since fully grown. Some of them are likely gone. Many of them spoke of how they longed to one day serve with me on the blood border. The northern edge of the Commonwealth is a flat and vulnerable expanse. The Highland Remit seized upon it at every opportunity from the cover of clouds or darkness. Sometimes I cannot help but wonder, if I were still were captain, could I have protected them? Could I have made a difference? I think not. The Commonwealth and the Highland Remnants, they have fought eternally. Those such as I have come and gone throughout the age. I catch myself feeling pity for my years, but then, had I remained there on the blood border, it is unlikely I would have lived to see this day. She looks at you again. Do you know why they cast me down? I was a decorated captain. They said I was the best. She closes her eyes a moment before she continues. One day, it was a standard patrol, but I ran across a pack of harp fledglings, fully armed and preparing for a strike, but all on their own. They were nothing for my regiment. We ensnared them all and took them in. A considerable prize. They were not yet conditioned and could be made to talk. When the order came down that they were to be executed, I could not bring myself. The Commonwealth, priding itself on mercy, committing such acts, 
through one such as me, it was unconscionable. So I thought then, at least in my younger years, I let the damned birds go, made no claims as to the contrary, and turned myself in. I was cast down the following week, 16 years ago. Thus, my enemies had the last laugh in that exchange. If I were faced with the same choice again today, I do not know for certain that I would have chosen just the same. Now then, I shall go and mark this occasion as I have always done. Be well, reader. She heads out of the wagon alone. And we get the bio update. Crime, insubordination, so you have to disobey a direct order to execute enemy combatants of the high-wing remnants. As mercy guides our hand, we spare your lives, but rid ourselves of you from the sentencing ceremony. Um, the motive insurrection the record statement showed flagrant disrespect for the proper chain of command and the downside ones passed in this discussion did I survive for 16 years in the downside thus far seasoned captain serving on the blood border she fostered the orphans of her fallen brothers and sisters one day she captured a flock of hard fledglings who'd flown close to the commonwealth when she was given the order to put them down she refused and thus was sent to exile she so her home and gained her horns. Many years later, she encountered Hedwin, whom she last remembered as one of the children she had in her care. Oh, so she, so she was, she, she helped raise Hedwin. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, uh, vi video games. Let's continue our journey. To the Hulk of Ores. Okay, stopped up. Here in the murky waters of the Sea of Solace, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin, whom you liberated at the fall of Solium. You learned Hedwin returned safe to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed, his past transgressions all forgiven. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the Council of the Blood Border, each equally as lucrative and secretive as well. However, he refused, and before the stunned council members could do anything about it, he left them. He since made contact with the Wolfert's agents and is working together with them. Okay, thus the ranks of the revolution are stronger. I was about to say, it might have been helpful to have you be in a powerful position, Hedwin, but as long as, you're, as long as you were still working on the plan, then it's good. For the messenger imp custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin, word for word, and says... Keep going. I'll see you here. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Soon your companions are all buzz about it. I didn't expect that. That's fun. We get a little bit of word. He did it. Wonder if he'll ever find the one he fell for. A glorious example Hedwin sets for all of us. <laughs> Tizo is happy to hear Hedwin is well back in the common world. I always thought Hedwin was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? Yeah, that's how it's done, Hedwin. Right behind you, chum. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. Plus one hope for the next fright. Wish Hedwin luck. That's so fun. That's such a fun little detail. That's great. Oh, I definitely love this game. This game's great. I like this game a lot. This is a good game. I really like this game. Anyways. Hulk of Aura. Okay, we got two two pages. Hulk of Aura's inscribed deeds. I can remember that, but I won't remember it, so let's go and read them now. Didn't expect chapter one to get more pages. I wish to be remembered not for boastfulness. Thus I refrain from detailing our exploits across the land, save to say that they were numerous. Know that only through our combined strength of arms and wit did we withstand this savage land. Such were the monstrous dangers that it posed. I came to see that all the terrors which I heard at bedside in my youth were based entirely in fact. So great they were they blotted out the sky. Such was the evil that we vanquished, that the remnants of it yet shine under the stars. And in the end, it was the stars which guided us toward our truest calling. The Hulk of Ores, page 69. Nice. The Dazurban were the first of many river ships to vanish in the downside. Although presumptions of its loss were not inaccurate, the doomed ship and her valiant crew had charted half the Sea of Solace ere the end of their brave voyage. The sea titan unfathomed Plurnus was not fond of vessels sullying her sea, and split the doomed ship with a single swipe. The ship's own shattered prow would later end the sea titan's cruel reign, as the boastful underking loves to recount. The stars themselves must have been moved by this. That point within the sea, now sacred, has the stars dancing in homage every now and again. Cool.
Oh, hey, you guys. You know, you just missed some other customers. I sold them some of my best stuff. Not better than the stuff I sold you, but if you run into some guys with good stuff, you know where they got it. Love this guy. Burning Promise. After dazzling the adversary's pyre, the bearer earns a reward up to three times of five coins. Promissory note what's owed to a bog dweller and chat to withstand tampering yet tampered with. That's fun. I like that, because I'm going to be dousing the adversary's pyre anyways. Whereas, like, the kill factor thing... Oh, wait, is it different? I guess I can't find out more about this note, which is a bummer, but yeah. That's all that. Um, I like that more. But we're running out of talismans that are not personalized to give people. I don't think... Wait, I think T's... Does Tizo have it? Hang on. Let me check this. Jadario has hers. Uh, Ruki has his. Faye has hers. Tizo doesn't have his yet. And... Uh, Pampa doesn't have hers. But it'd be more useful than plus three quickness, because Tizo's already very quick. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this. It's only 20. And then 50 for a plus four. Why don't we hold off on that for a second? And I think I think that if you leave the uh, Stardust in the shop for a little longer, um, they get cheaper. So we're gonna do that. But let's go ahead and give this Burning Promise to Tiso. We could sell these, but we don't really need to, we don't have anything to buy aside from the Stardust. And as I said, we're gonna see if we can get a better deal on that later. Cool. Pleasure doing business with you guys, so, uh... Oh, that was the end of the sentence. 